All right, so we're here with Mikhail S on Paradox, which is just another high elo, high MMR player. So let's see how much we could learn, all right? Uh, let's get started. You <laughs> see everybody typing, just trying. Oh, God. The toxicity is going to come out soon, I feel like. Oh. All right, first thing we noticed is that uh, she is going to see if she could get like a nicely long range poke going on. She didn't get it off though, she missed, but of course she's going to be focusing entirely on getting all those trooper souls because if you don't start getting them, you will just fall behind. You do not want to fall behind, right? At all. Because at the end of the day, the souls are everything. Like, they are your income, they are your strength, they are your abilities, literally. You, I don't know if you all know this, but I'll put up a little graph here that you could see from the main menu. But you do... The souls dictate when you unlock your abilities as well. So, like, it is really, really bad when you fall behind on souls. The enemy will have abilities before you, they'll have their ultimate before you, and you will just not have a good time. But you see here, right now, she is getting just absolutely railed because their team comp has so much AoE. That combination of the sleep from Haze and the alchemical flask from Warden is just not hitting too right right now. Or maybe it's hitting too right from their perspective. But yeah, she had to back because this one thing I've noticed too is that a lot of people will just like die in lane, which is really bad. Not because you died and you gave souls, but because you lose so many troopers when you die. I believe at least early game for sure, I know that the four troopers are equivalent to a kill. And you know, the waves come like what, every 15 seconds, maybe every 20 seconds. So by the time you die, you lose a wave. So, so you really, really, really just don't want to die. But yeah, she's still getting really poked out at the moment. Um, wonder how she's going to deal with that situation. Always be going for the trooper headshots. There's no reason to shoot them in the body ever. First of all, their head is like half of their body there. Candle. Pretty hard to miss. Ooh, look at that. She gets a really, really good snipe on the uh, haze there. Also notice the first thing that she bought was healing, right? And you know why? Because she's getting poked out, right? Like you, if you're getting poked out from the enemy, you don't want to, you probably want to go defensive. Uh, she almost dies here. Holy crap. She tries to zone with her little bomb. It works, I think, because Warden is not killing her right now. Now, Paradox 3, the kinetic carbine does scale with weapon damage. You can see right here, it says, is an amplification of your current weapon damage. That is really important to remember because you probably don't really want to be spamming soul ability power on Paradox. It's just, it's not going to work out. You actually want to be building a ton of weapon damage instead. At least we're going for the sniper build. I don't know, maybe you could do something with the bomb. Try to make that scale well. We see here, Warden is being very, very aggressive. That's one of the things I've noticed too about these high MMR games is that they keep up the pressure no matter what. Like they don't let, they don't ever let you just like exist. They're kind of constantly trying to abuse their abilities on you. Because this is not like League of Legends, right? There's no mana, there's no resource preventing you from using your abilities aside from the cooldowns. So, you know, feel free to spam them off cooldown. Unless, you know, it's one of your escape abilities. Don't spam that one off cooldown. You might, you'll probably die for it. See how, like, the Warden is, like, positioning himself to always be poking? But he did make a mistake. Is he gonna die for it? He dies for it. Now, she manages to escape from the haze, at least temporarily. Will it work? Look at that. She hits the bomb on the haze from below. That is such a sick move. I need to remember that. She goes back in on the haze. She's trying to do the one shot, but the haze had out. And one thing I noticed too is that if we look at the haze right now, there's an icon with a little lightning bolt. That tells you when the hero has their ultimate, by the way. So make sure and keep mindful of that, especially around like the 5 minute mark when people start getting their ultimates. 
and you know pass that because then you'll actually know if a character doesn't have their ultimate and then you could abuse that fact especially on certain champions like infernus for example infernus is very i wouldn't say infernus is ultimate heavy but like in a team fight infernus is very ultimate heavy because that ultimate is literally game changing right and we see here she does a nice little room that's i love i love paradox ultimate so much like it looks so sick when you get somebody in the air and you ult them from in the air and just like that mr lash dies oh god i hate lash so much <laughs> he's always in the air just like sitting on your face which i hate uh there's way too many characters that like just exist in the air i feel like there is an item you could buy for that but speaking of items ooh, he is probably gonna die right now no no she get, actually gets back up from her team but it's not enough because she gets slapped with the alchemical flask from far away that was a that was a good attempt at following up though from their uh from their shiv so i mean honestly props to him but yeah right now she's you see how she's just buying defensive items like she has restor restorative locket because she needs the healing from all that pork that she's getting from mr warden uh yeah just pure defensives she only has hollow point ward and basic magazine whereas by now you might have mystic boost on uh paradox so yeah, it's very important to change up your build depending on like the team comp and like how exactly they're playing compared to your playstyle. you can't be just building the same thing every game that's not gonna work long term for sure look at that that swap i don't know if that swap was intentionally timed or if it was just lucky but like ah that was so sexy i i love that the amount of like outplaying you could do with paradox is kind of insane uh that's why she's probably my favorite character i like influence as well just because finger guns but <laughs> other than that uh, i think paradox is probably my favorite we need more finger gun characters though realistically i see here right now she doesn't have much safety in lane and well she does have safety in lane but there's a jungle camp right there so why would you not take it right make sure and take the jungle camps as they're coming up if you have the ability to do so there's there's no reason to not take it like it's just free souls at the end of the day And you see how she rotates? She knows that a bunch of the enemy team is on the right side of the map, far away from her. So she's actually able to shove the wave underneath the tower. But now she's rotating because she knows she could get a kill. And he gets time, time killed. Carbine killed? Not too sure what I was supposed to say there. Oh, now she's in like a 3v... <laughs> a 3v1 ah god she got caught out of position but honestly that was a good rotation still still a good attempt at actually helping your teammates which is, is very important right you have to make sure and be aware of the map one thing i keep hopping on is like look at the map every maybe three seconds you need to know what is going on around you and despite this being a third person game it is i find it hard to keep track of like who is around me and what like what is going on and what my teammates positioning is all that fun stuff so yeah just practice like look at the map every three seconds no matter what because you need to know who is rotating towards you who is rotating away from you you know i've had it happen a bunch of times where like my teammates i will go help them and they will just like run away <laughs> because somebody else shows up i'm like uh okay like sure I, I i was coming to help you but now you've abandoned me for some reason have you all experienced this let me know in the comments if you've experienced this because maybe maybe my mmr is just too low i'm not too sure yet i mean i'm at the point where people like heavily deny souls and like contest objectives and stuff so getting up there she tries to go for a sneak uh cheeky snipe she does not get it off but this lash lash what are you doing it's a paradox she's just gonna one shot you and she does Unfortunately, there's a he there's a shiv right now. The shiv is kind of getting clapped. And look at that, she actually is. Uh, she doesn't escape because I I thought she was gonna escape, but then shiv of course comes through with his 
very annoying alt where he just dashes at you and removes your life. He deletes you, makes you unalive, whatever you're supposed to say these days. We can see now, one of the things that she built as well is Warpstone. Warpstone is really, 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 really good. I suggest you all try the actives, especially Warpstone, because Warpstone allows you to reposition. Um, and also it gives you, I believe... Uh, it gives you, yeah, it gives you bullet resist, 40% bullet resist. So like, if you warp stone into a fight, you're way tankier. Uh, I mean, it only lasts for like what five seconds. I mean, five seconds is a significant amount of time. I've realized too that the passives in this game, they actually last quite a while. Or oh, the actives, like all these status effects, they last like three, four, five seconds. It's not like one second, and you just like. Wow, I actually have to time this well. Like, you have a significant period of time to actually, you know, get stuff done. Alright, so we see the Shiv here engaging. Uh, a little bit scary. Like, Shiv, Shiv is one of those characters that, like, does so much damage so fast that you kind of just get surprised. And if you look on the side here, you could actually see that... The game does tell you when you have buffs, right? Now look at that. She once again swaps one of the enemy underneath the walker. That's a move I am going to copy for sure. It, um, he almost dies. Oh, wait. He actually does die. Look at that. That was such a poof. That was such like a poofix swap. Because the walkers do regularly do their giant AoE stun, right? So, like, even if you aren't aware of, like, when it's coming up, I don't know if there is a way to tell. Let me know if there is a way to tell when the walker is about to stun. Maybe it has like some sort of tell. I haven't seen it as yet. And now we're actually just taking the opportunity to get an objective because we have our teammate with us. Always good to do. Don't be afraid to push objectives, right? Like you see here, like she uses a backwards dash to get out. Will it work? Oh, Bebop. Thank you. Bebop, that was sick. This ship is not letting out. But you see here the use of the warp stone to actually, you know, reposition and get out because she knows that she's gonna die. She only has like 650 health. Not the time to go back in. And if you see if you see your teammate go in in that situation, depending, maybe it's a 2v1. Maybe you, you like stay in the back line and try to like do help them out. But definitely don't run up and like be in the center of the fight. That is not gonna work. Shiv is gonna execute you. Reef is gonna ult you and you won't be able to escape because you'll be knocked up from miles away even if you dash out. It's all about the positioning at the end of the day. All right, she's up once again just rotating, making sure she gets all that farm. Don't, don't Never let the waves just like crash into your objectives, by the way. The tro troopers do a surprising amount of damage. Like if you leave the troopers to kind of just like hit your objectives over and over and over, especially initial guardians, you will just lose them very, very fast. She's trying to get she's trying to get that um, enemy character to fall. Because if you don't know, if you shoot someone on the zip lines, they can get stunned if you do uh, enough damage. I don't know what that damage is. I do wish I knew. Maybe it's like 100 HP or something. It's not that hard to stun them, by the way. And then they, there's also a cooldown on the zip lines for when you get knocked off of it. So if if you know you have like a movement ability to get on top of them and you know you're gonna win the 1v1, 100 percent attempt it. No reason not to. And if we take take in the amount of actives she has, by the way, healing right, restorative locket, warp stone, and decay. This decay is gonna come in clutch later on. And I guarantee the reason that she used decay is because of that healing reduction for the Abrams, the Haze, the Lash, the Shiv. <laughs> All four of them have a ton of healing in their kit. So you don't wanna just like only build damage you want to build healing reduction as well it's all about being a you know changing up your build depending on what the enemy has and what they're building and we're in a team fight you see how she's just like holding back kind of just getting poke on people you have your e your three i almost said my your, your e like as league of legends um you have your three to do significant damage from range right especially if you built a ton of weapon damage which she did like Warpstone gives you 20% weapon damage. 
Hollow Point Ward gives you weapon damage. Mystic Shot gives you a significant amount of damage on your next bullet, which is perfect for Paradox Kinetic Carbine. Now they are trying to push the objective. They're being heavily contested. Will they? Will it work out? Mm, no, they couldn't get a walk in time. Oh, that's so sad. Now, one thing, look at the state of the waves right now. You notice how they have all their waves shoved in such a way that there is a straight path towards the soul urn drop off point. Perfect opportunity to take the soul urn. That's one thing I've noticed in my games that we don't take opportunities enough to take the soul urn, which is constantly up, it seems like. It doesn't seem like it has much of a cooldown. Will this get contested though? Are you gonna have to drop the urn? No, you don't have to drop the urn. Oh, nice, you got the urn. It's always very sad when you have the urn and like right before you drop it to the altar, you get contested and you die. But luckily she gets the drop off before. No, oh no. Oh no, she did not get the urn. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. That's, all, that, that's always so painful. I mean, they are up on souls like there's 7,000 souls up in terms of the team now they did lose a team fight there so they are they now are way closer ahead in souls uh that's all that's important to remember too is that like when you die uh, there seems to be some sort of catch-up mechanic which i'm not i know there is a catch-up mechanic and that like when you are behind on souls oh that was a really clean kill yeah when you are behind on souls you seem to get more souls so do not like don't like just immediately give up when you're behind you could easily come back in this game which i love it's not it's not as snowbally as a game like league of legends um i've never really played dota i think i played dota like once a very 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 long time ago so i'm not really familiar with it too much i can't but yeah definitely league of legends like if somebody snowballs out of control it is it, it could be sometimes extremely hard to come back it is not that way in this game. Like, if you all just, like, group up and you get a good pick a few times. Like, you see, for example, right now, the enemy that was 7k souls behind is now 1k souls ahead. There's no reason to give up in this game. See here, she's taking the opportunity to get this guardian that just did not go down somehow. The final guardian. The final first guardian, at least. Initial guardian. You see how the teammates are trying, they're kind of like looking to see if they could do the mid-boss. They can't because the enemy is fully up and they are aware, right? There's not a lobby where like people just don't know what is happening. But they clear the jungle in the mid, the mid jungle, as we will be calling it from now on, which is really nice. Maybe we get the solo and make sure you get these buffs are above the grates, by the way. It's always good. They're temporary buffs, I believe. Like it says here, you have like casting a casting buff. I can't hover over it to see what it actually is, which is a little bit annoying. Let's see if we can see it. Hmm, no. Right now we're in a giant team fight. How are we gonna do? She swaps him through the wall. Uh, ooh, you just got destroyed. I am sorry to see. Warp zone to reposition. Very nice, very nice. Now, the Abrams has slowing hex, right? Really, really, really important on characters. If you if you're versus a character like Talon, or for example, uh, what's her name again? Invict Invicta. Vindicta. Yeah, Invicta. Invictus. Invictus is a Latin word, right? We see here now that one of the, or oh, three of the enemy are de dead, they took the opportunity to take the mid boss. And not only that, one thing I noticed too is that she's doing a burst fire into her heavy melee. I wonder how significant that damage increase is. I would like to check the DPS, honestly. I'm gonna check the DPS and like get back to you all on that because I think it's important to know if that's a really, really good tactic. Because if it is, that just helps. Do the, maybe you do the mid boss like 20% faster. That could be the difference between getting the rejuvenation, re the rejuvenator, and not getting it. So, something very important to consider. Ooh, look at that snipe, though. Is somebody gonna get swapped through the wall? No, she misses the alt. Ah. I mean, adding a 
Paradox Alt is a skill shot, right? So uh, it's not exactly easy to hit if they're far away. It doesn't travel. It's, it's not like Bebop Hook, where like it's, it, it travels at uh, infinite speed. Once again, we're taking the opportunity to get the objective. If you see one person dead, like now is your time to push, right? Especially if you have your teammates right behind you. Definitely not the time to back, even if you have souls. Because you could get some for free, basically. Now, right here, they try to gang up on all of the enemy. We'll see if it pays out, pays off. They're in a giant team fight. Ugh, Paradox is kind of caught out, but Bebop is here to help her. Will it work? Hmm, no. There's too many of them. They lost the team fight. Ah, that sucks. But the nice thing is that they have their Wraith hitting the shrine right now. So the enemy is going to have to back off. The enemy can't really just like continue pushing because they have to deal with Wraith first or else Wraith will get the shrine for free. Reef dies, though. She does not get the shrine. That's a good attempt, honestly. Yeah, this item, Pristine Emblem, it's actually really, really good because of the spirit resist. It gives you so many stats, come think about it. Like, is this item broken? I feel like it is. Yeah, like, it gives you spirit power, it gives you spirit resist, it gives you weapon damage, and it gives you additional weapon damage on tank, like, people who are always above 50% health, like tanks. Yeah, okay. Definitely item to look out for as well. Now, she also has Curse, right? Like, Curse, Curse is really, really good because it interrupts everything. Borderline. But you have to actually remember to use it. And look, look, look how long the active cooldown is. Only 38 seconds. That's like nothing. That's like every team fight you could, you could proc Curse on somebody. Now, I wonder who she uses Curse on. We'll have to make sure and look out for that to see what she uses Curse on. And she has the debuff reducer. Why does she have the debuff reducer? Probably for Shiv, because debuff reducer will reduce the Shiv bleed, which is important. Like, if you get destroyed by Shiv, definitely buy debuff reducer early on. And some spirit armor as well. And then Shiv is not gonna just delete you on repeat. And here the map awareness comes in into play. You see how, like, they focus in the same target. Make sure you're focusing the same target, right? Even if somebody else comes into play, focus the same target. <laughs> you need to get one down first, or else you're in an even fight, and you never want to have an even fight. That's no, there's no reason to have an even fight ever. Once again, we're taking the opportunity to get the soul in because the lanes are shoved. It's very safe to get the soul in going right now. Hopefully, we don't feel this time. I just remember too, you always need, want to be collecting the boxes, right? The boxes, the statues, they give you permanent bonuses. There's no reason to not just be collecting them, especially because you could dash through them, you could dash roll through them. So you don't have to shoot and slow yourself down. But yeah, we, we get the soul in. So that's a f good... Let's see. How many souls was that? She gets 4,000 souls for that, by the way. That was That's insane. 4,000 souls. Yeah, that's so worth it. I mean, she doesn't get pussy. The team gets it, but you know. You still get a significantly bigger boost of souls. You get 25% bonus souls from the soul earn when you cash it in. So ideally, especially if you're somebody with a movement ab ability like Paradox that you could activate before you pick up the soul earn, you want to be the person who is constantly running it. I wonder who else could do it. Like, can Ivy fly? And do the soul earn at the same time, I wonder. I have to test that. But yeah, right now she's zoning them out. She's forcing them to run through her ability, so they're actually taking significant damage. They've decided not to keep going because they know they will die. At the end of the day, there's a paradox. Paradox could kind of just one-shot you. As, or, or even if she gets like multiple rotations of her abilities, you will just die. Although that is kind of the case for every character. That poor seven, that poor seven was not expected to die, nor was that Ivy. Again, Paradox is an assassin, right? So she does like way more damage than you think, but you, you have to land your abilities. And your abilities are all skill shots, so you don't really just get to do damage for free. Shiv.
All right, and just like that, we won the team fight. Now, what are they gonna do? They're gonna keep, they're gonna stay together, right? This is one thing I hate about a lot of what my team does is that they will separate. This is this right now, my team would separate out instead of pushing the same objective, which is very annoying. Now, the Bebop had to back, but the thing is that three of them are still pushing and they're going to get something for sure. They don't get anything. I was wrong. Oh no. Oftentimes you would get something, no? They did get something, actually. What they got was the mid boss. You see Ivy, Ivy's typing there inside mid. I mean Ivy is, is a little bit too late for that, unfortunately. Oh, that swap was so sexy. I, I love this swap. This swap is just, it is too good. It is too cinematic. And Bebop right now is going, is unleashing the Hyper Beam. So they're all dead. They're all dead and they died at a time when all the lanes are pushing. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to stick together, shove all, shove all the lanes, at least two of the lanes. And probably end the game off of that because the enemy team threw really hard. And again, even if you have 4,000 souls, now is not the time to back, right? Make sure you push the objectives with your team. If the entire enemy team is dead, there's no reason to be, like, doing so something else. No reason to be jungling at this point. At the end of the day, that's called macro, right? Like, you have to have awareness of the macro of the game, like, what is happening on the map. And look at that. The patron is just getting melted at this point because the enemy is just dead. There's nobody to contest besides Warden right now. Ivy's gonna come back up, but Ivy is, you know... Ivy is more of a supportive character, and not only that, she's really behind. She has 25,000 compared to Paradox's 36,000 souls. Really hard to one-shot a Warden. I can tell you that much. Warden is very tanky. It's kind of amusing that the tanks in this game aren't like traditional tanks where like they just exist to be hit. They still do damage. So, still have to be very afraid of them. Now, one thing to keep in mind right now, what they're doing is that they are killing the enemy first. They're not just like hitting the patron. You have to kill the enemy. Don't let the enemy just like wipe you because you lose all your pushing power. Because, you know. You Look at that. They get to end the game so easily. And we get victory. That was so, so clean. All right, I hope you all learned a lot. I will put the entire build right now so you could see it and you could copy and paste and change it up as you desire let's see so paradox did get 13 kills 6 deaths and 21 assists and she did so much that game 38 thousand damage that was yeah that was, that was a lot of impact there all right well yeah thank you very much for watching like this video if you liked it subscribe for some more deadlock especially once we are able to publicly publish the videos for now i'm just happy to do the videos for funsies um as somebody would say i don't know if i say that uh <laughs> but yeah all right yeah thank you very much for watching again and i'll see you guys soon all right so take care